Hi everyone, John James C here. Um, so basically just a bit of a layout update and I want to give you a, a little heads up as to what's basically been happening um, over the last uh, few days um, trying to sort the layout out. Now over the Christmas period um, I took it upon myself to basically spend a lot of time and attention to my nice MPD area. Now unfortunately things have not been going very well. Um, it's probably the best way to explain it. Um, and this is probably down um, a little bit on my part, um, but basically it's a case of I've been running lots of locos into the MPD section, um, and then one day I came out and I had a quite a lot of locos, a bit more than I actually have in there at the moment, actually, um, quite a lot of locos in the MPD section, and I couldn't power the layout out. Um, it just refused all the time. Um, now, multiple tries, eventually it did all of a sudden come into life after me a lot of head scratching wondering what the heck was going on um, and what I basically found is that uh, the locos that I have um, you know while some of them are large I do tend to put a lot of stay alives in all of my locos um, even things like the 10,000 just here um, I say just here you can't really see it but my 10,000 just here even that's got a stay alive in it um, big loco doesn't really need to stay alive but I just tend to do it as a, uh, a sort of <laughs> of course, I just tend to do it as a, a sort of routine thing now. Um, but what I've basically found is that because I had so many locos in here with stay alives, all of those stay alives were trying to grab power at once, and uh, it was stopping the layout from powering up. Um, so, something to be mindful of there when you're doing stay alives. But because I had a large number of them in here, it was basically causing well, the DR5000 was basically not in, uh, turning on because it thought. There was a short because of the massive inrush current that was happening. Um, so basically my way of trying to counter this is I thought, well, I'll have a little bit of a rejig. Um, I've got a Team Digital uh, accessory booster unit. Um, great little unit. So basically at the time I was using the Tam Valley booster. So what I've done is I've taken the Tam Valley one off. I've taken the DCC output from that and put it into the Team Digital one. Given it a uh, 12 volt power supply, um, 3 amp, admittedly, um, but uh, yeah, given it a 12 volt, 3 amp power supply, and uh, the handy thing with that one as well is it also plugs into the loco net, um, so I don't need to do any additional wiring for the DCC in. I've just literally plugged it into the loco net port, um, and that was relatively done and over very quickly, 20 minutes, and the accessory bus was working, all my points are working, all my signals are working, fantastic, wonderful, right. Then I come to this side of the equation. So the idea was uh, I wanted to take the Tam Valley booster that I had uh, and use it to power the MPD section, uh, effectively making this into uh, a second district, um, as a lot of people would call it. Um, the idea of that being that the, the main layout could be powered by the DR5000 and then this section here could basically be run off the, uh, the Tam Valley booster um, and that would basically resolve all the issues. Um, now, so a little bit of wiring, a little bit of tricks to done. So I've had to cut the rails just in front of me here. Um, this is the S pen, by the way, but I'm just using it as a bit of a pointer. Um, so I've cut the rails across there. So basically that isolates the main layout from the MPD section. And now the MPD section has its own dedicated bus. Now, I always did this um, with that in mind because I was gonna fit a circuit breaker into the MPD section anyway. Um, with the terms of if something shorted in the MPD section it wasn't going to kill the rest of the layout. Um, so that's kind of played to my advantage a little bit because it now means that I can just throw the booster in that point and uh, not have too much problems. But, so the, the next issue I've basically had is voltage. Now from what I read and what I know it's not an ideal situation to have a difference in voltage between two different track buses or two different boosters in this case um, so I've had a bit of a problem and a conundrum where uh, I've basically not had matching voltages across the uh, the booster side of things so this is why I'm doing this little talk because um, I thought it'd be worth doing it um, to basically explain now don't get me wrong I've, I've had a lot of conversation I've never done this before on any of my railways at all all my railways have been little exhibition layouts so this is a large home layout, you know, it disappears through the wall there and it goes 
right off down far end uh, and so on and uh, comes back on a big return loop but yeah so this is probably the biggest railway I've ever owned um, so yeah this is why I'm uh, sort of doing a little bit of learning as well myself um, you know whilst I'm great at doing DCC decoder installs and lighting and all this sort of stuff you know the actual DCC side on the layout side is still relatively I wouldn't say it's new to me but it's there's a lot more to it uh, and a lot more things that I'm still learning and figuring out myself um, you know even you know even though I do it for a living uh, and I do it as a job it's a case of you can always learn more um, but anyway what I've basically done is I've got the cut and the track there and I've got the two sections powered by DCC boosters so this side of the layout here is all off the DR5000 and everything from this bridge section here onwards is all off the Tam Valley booster now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my multimeter here and show you um, unfortunately you won't be able to see the screen very well so what I'll do is I'll read it out now I've got this on an AC setting on my meter now it's not going to be a true track voltage I will stipulate that I will say that to start with but it will give me a rough idea of what's going on so what I should do is I shall meter out this side of the track to start with and that's giving me 14 okay so 14 14.1 14 with a little bit of fluctuation right if I come to the other side and I meter this side I'm getting 14 14.1 14 okay so seems to be similar sort of voltages there now this is the interesting trick to this right I'm going to take this probe and put this on one rail on the DR5000 side and I'm going to take this one and put it on the same rail but I'm going to put it on the opposite side on the Tam Valley booster and basically what I get is I get a one volt one one point point nine one volt point nine difference now that's not something I want to see ideally I need those voltages to be identical or at least below sort of point eight ideally if I take it and go across to the other rail as well I get a similar instance where I basically get a point nine point one uh, sorry put one point nine one and it's basically fluctuating between the two um so yeah there's the sort of situation i'm kind of facing at the moment now i've got different power supplies um so i've been trying a few different power supplies to see if i can get a good rough balance that kind of thing um but I, as i said ideally i need those voltages to be less than 0.8 um now in this sort of instance, I'm uh, in this in this instance, I'm going to struggle. I think um, my main reason for my struggles is obviously I've tried to mix and match boosters. Um, now, the workaround to this is going to be I'm unfortunately going to have to go and invest in the DigiKeys uh, fifty thirty three booster um, and basically use the same power supply um, on both units so they'll both go to an 18 volt power supply um so the, the dr 30 uh 33 excuse me 5033 that will run this section here will be on its own 18 volt power supply and then the dr 5000 again will have another 18 volt power supply and those power supplies will be exactly identical the other thing that is worth noting as well when you look at a power supply i'll see if i can find one quickly just so i can grab it and show you you've got to make sure they're double isolated as well now people are going to say what, what would you mean by double isolated so i'm going to pick on this little power supply here in front of me because it's got a good indicator of what the uh, the box is here so this is just basically my dremel charger but it's that logo there that double square that's what you need to look for to make sure that it's a double isolated transformer okay most most power bricks do have that um, even your uh, your iPhone charger or anything like that will probably have it on more than likely. But yeah, so that's kind of the situation I'm in at the moment. Um, whether or not we'll be able to use the MPD tonight, um, that's a different question. Um, but yeah, um, that's kind of the situation I'm in at the moment. So um, so yeah, I'll just have to basically wait for that DR5033 to come and uh, that will basically get it all swapped over. 
Um, until then, keep your eye on the updates, keep an eye on the live streams. This is John James Hay saying take care. Bye bye.